Hi, uh, George here. Um, I want to uh, talk about some uh, recent events uh, regarding Israel and the Middle East, and in particular the geopolitics of the area. Uh, because this is a, a bearing on uh, the end times and the closeness of the rapture. Now, the, you will notice in the news recently that the United States and Iran are beginning negotiations about Iran's nuclear program. Now, uh, and that Israel is uh, highly concerned about this. Now, in order to understand the motivations of the United States, we need to look at its geopolitical strategy. The United States' uh, geopolitical strategy is to maintain control of the oceans and to ensure a disunited um, uh, Asiatic uh, landmass. In uh, other words, it wants to control all the oceans by its navy in order, to, in, in order to ensure its security. And its security also depends on there being an uh, Asian landmass that is uh, not allied with each other. So they must be in conflict with each other. Not necessarily fighting a war, but they must be preparing for war against each other and not against the United States. So uh, there are challenges to both. Um, the uh, Russia and China are emerging again as military powers. Well, Russia again, but China is emerging as a military power. It's building a navy. It is asserting its rights into at least the South China Sea, which the Philippines like to call it the West Philippine Sea, but you get the idea. It's all about uh, control of um, the oceans and the seas. This is a threat to the geopolitical strategy of the United States. At the same time, the Asiatic countries are forming alliances. Um, Russia and China and uh, the countries around, around them are, are from, uh, have formed an agreement as part of the Shanghai Treaty or Shanghai Accord. And uh, the Islam is sympathetic in some parts of Islam anyway, the, uh, at least Iran, is sympathetic uh, uh, to Russia. They're forming an alliance, uh, it's a military, and they're exchanging technology. This, this is all where, after all, the nuclear technology f that Iran has is being obtained uh, from, the, from Russia. So there's a danger of a Central Asian landmass being united. So in order to counter this, the United States is making alliances with Islam. I think it's trying to form a friendly relationship with Iran surprisingly enough and shocking as it may be to some of you given that their politics are so different and their values are so different but uh, geopolitics being what it is the United States has to do that in order to counter there has to be another power in order to counter the dominant powers of China and Russia now, you would think, well, Israel is there, right? So, uh, shouldn't Israel be there? Where there's a strong point, as it has been in the past. It could be the United States uh, are seeing the value of Israel quite, uh, you know, as being less than it used to be in the past and is counting more on Islam, which is a mistake. But they are seeing... Of course, they're not using a biblical worldview. I mean, if you use a biblical worldview, they'd be backing Israel to the hilt because Israel is the only country that, uh, you know, that it's, it's, Israel is protected uh, by God, right? And they should be in line with Israel because that would um, be a means through which God would bless the United States because those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who are curse Israel and be his enemies would also then be, uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, God God doesn't like that. And God will make it known to them, you know, that they should not be enemies of Israel. As many of these enemies of Israel have found out. So, America might have made a wrong call in backing Islam instead of Israel in order to uh, ensure a disunited Asiatic landmass. So Islam would then, of course, be a counter against China and Russia.
which themselves have issues with Islam. And Israel will be caught in, uh, you know, in, in, in a bad situation because its ally, United States, will no longer be backing them. They are surrounded with enemies, and Israel will be backed into a corner. Now, God has promised uh, Israel that it would be, uh, you know, it would last, right? It has been restored uh, back after uh, thousands of years, uh, uh, you know, say ever since the fall of the temple in AD 70, it has now been restored. And that its restoration as a country with its language and a culture, and, uh, you know, it's a miracle that has been witnessed. In, in, in modern times. It is a sign that we're at the end of the days, end of days, that Israel has been restored. So if Israel, what will Israel do? In, in the event that Israel is threatened uh, by its enemies and in a situation where its survival is in question, it has an option called the Samson option, which is basically a, a preemptive nuclear strike on all its enemies. And bear in mind, although Israel is small, it's a highly advanced country in terms of its, you know, its technology, its education, and its people are actually one of the best. And, uh, you know, in terms of the sciences, they are, they are in the lead, especially in technology, in communication technology, and military technology. They have over a hundred nuclear weapons and the means of delivering these. And so the Samson option could well be used. And but when the Samson option was devised, it was devised during a time when anti-ballistic technology was not that well developed. Since then, Israel has developed and has deployed and is now operational anti-ballistic missile defenses. So in case they are attacked by nuclear weapons, they will be defended. And these uh, anti-ballistic missile defenses have an advantage in that the territory that they have to defend is relatively small compared to those of other countries. It's not possible to protect, uh, uh, you know, large land masses with these things because the, eventually some of the ballistic missiles with nuclear weapons would fall and destroy a large area. But Israel has a narrow uh, territorial profile and it can be reasonably protected. And it has multi multiple layers of defenses activated both long-range, medium-range, and short-range anti-ballistic missiles. So it could also believe that it could launch a preemptive strike and uh, survive. Now, we know from the Bible that the Psalm 83 uh, scenario is, is Israel attacking the same way that uh, Gideon attacked the Midianites, right? So. Israel would then attack first against an enemy that is preparing to attack Israel. There are indications that, it, uh, that based on the destruction of Damascus in a day, a sudden destruction of Damascus, and the devastation of the areas of Edom and Egypt, that nuclear weapons might be used against Syria, Jordan, and Egypt. Um, which uh, are, are natural enemies of Israel from the past. So they were the ones who attacked Israel during the Six-Day War. And this would permit Israel to expand its borders over to the Nile and Euphrates and be in a position to have the territory to base, to stage an attack on Iran. Right? It might be then, this might coincide then with the, uh, after, after this happens, because this war is, it has been prophesied to happen, it might be that the peace treaty would be signed then by the Antichrist uh, against the enemies of Israel and securing Israel's borders, giving it uh, a land without walls that would be the prerequisite for the Ezekiel War, which will be an attack from Iran, Russia, Libya, Ethiopia, you know, areas in the outer ring, which will now be actually the ring because Israel would have expanded. So that's the scenario that might uh, play out. Then the rapture would happen before the Psalm, 20, Psalm 83 war, 
other words, what happened before the preemptive, the first strike by Israel, because uh, we are referred to as the the hidden hidden ones in <clears throat> in that psalm. Okay, so there, um, and that is very scenario is very close. Now, given the closeness of that, and since the rapture happens before the Psalm 83 war, it follows that the rapture could happen at any time now. Uh, in fact, uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu seemed quite concerned about uh, the developments and calling it a, a really, really bad deal. I don't think the United States will be changing its mind anytime soon because I think there are geopolit geopolitical necessities on its part. It's making the wrong call. It's backing the wrong players. It should back Israel because Israel is a much more reliable partner than uh, the Islamic countries, especially Iran. Uh, but uh, they seem to think that there's no choice. They seem to be looking things at the, too much of the worldly sense that they would say, well, um, maybe Iran, you know, maybe Iran is already a nuclear power or close to it. And they don't really, uh, you know, I, I think they are probably, they're worried that if they attacked Iran, it would drive Islam towards the, the Russia-China bloc, and then they would achieve a geopolitical failure of strategy, you know, having a disunited Asiatic land mass. So, but anyway, uh, time will tell, it, whatever happens, you should be ready and to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior now, right? The tribulation will be very, the tribulation happens after the rapture, and uh, you know, the signs of the tribulation would be wars, famine, economic collapse, you know, things like that. It, it, everybody will be forced to take a, a mark on their right hand or forehead that will force them to, that will, that will be the only means for them to buy and sell. This is the mark of the beast. And if you take that mark, you are going to be, uh, there's no hope for you. You would be going to hell, right? Uh, we don't know exactly, you know, the, the, that, that mark, once anyone who takes the mark cannot be saved anymore. Right? You can be saved now, no matter what you've done. But once the tribulation starts, and once the Antichrist rises from the power, and once you accept the mark of the beast, you are uh, damned forever. No hope. So don't take that mark. And you, if you don't take that mark, you will be killed. And I, I think, you know, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and be killed, rather than take that mark. Now that's going to be a very difficult option for, uh, for, uh, for all of you. If you're going to take that option, best to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior now and get raptured, right? Why go through the tribulation? Why do you want to go through that? Don't go through that. I, I, don't, I don't think... If you think that um, uh, fighting for your beliefs is going to be difficult now, it might be impossible. You, you're going you're gonna to need, definitely, a supernatural aid of the, of the Holy Spirit. God will help you to do this. But you will have to be martyred for your faith in the tribulation. So accept Jesus Christ now, you know, and and, and be, be raptured as part of the bride. All right? Uh, no, don't don't wait. Remember, the gospel is very simple. Jesus Christ died for your sins. We are all sinners. We have all come short. We cannot enter heaven because in order to enter heaven, you need to be perfect. None of us are perfect. So Jesus Christ died for our sins, for free, because God loves us. God has to administer justice, and God is love, right? He has justice and love, and so he, how that's reconciled in the cross, that in the cross, justice is satisfied and love is satisfied. So we are saved by Jesus Christ, giving of himself for us. Now he's a, he's a, a sacrifice of himself was accepted which is why he was resurrected so he's up there now waiting for us so you believe in him now believe in him as your lord and savior he died for your sins and follow jesus commit to follow jesus right and uh, by faith by believing in, in, in what he has done for you and accepting him and grasping on to his free gift of salvation and then following him that's the way and you will be saved, right? 
that is the, you, 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 that that is a promise from God. Believe, have faith in Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. So have faith in Him now. Don't delay. There is uh, very little, very little time left. I was talking in an earlier video about uh, the typhoon Yolanda in the Philippines. How people were devastated, uh, and although there were there were given warnings, and if the typhoon came and destroyed everything, many people died. So, and so warnings are happening now. Warnings of the tribulation. Please heed those warnings now, because time is very short. All right, this is uh, George uh, signing off. Uh, prepare for departure. Uh, our, we'll be meeting our Lord very soon. And, uh, well, what a day that will be. Marina, bye.